Wellness Week Live, the Father's Day special. I searched high and low, and I got one of the best dads out there. And we're gonna put, we're gonna talk about fatherhood and how it pertains to health and wellness because it's important. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into it. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share with a friend because this is important. Okay. And by the way, we did the Mother's Day show, so stop, moms. We love you. It's Dad's time now. Okay. So, Dad, Danny, how are you? Thanks for making time. Good, Anthony. How about yourself? All right, buddy. So, um, all right, well, let's get right into it. So, you know, I always wonder because, um, you know, I, although I, you know my story, but I, I was never a biological father. So, um, you know, I was an adopted, you know, father I adopted. But um, so what did it feel like when you heard that you were going to be a, a dad? You know, you, you're, you know, your wife says, you, for your firstborn, you know, like, wow, you, you're going to be a father. What, what, what went through your mind? Even though you kind of, obviously you're married, you, you, you wanted a family, but when you first heard the news, what was the boom first reaction? First reaction is like an overwhelming excitement. And then a like sincere amount of fear all at the same time. Like yeah. it's the playing it. I don't care if you're planning for it or it's a surprise or something that's, you know, just, an oops, let's just say, I mean, you know, no matter what it is, you are just, you're, there's an excitement of being a dad. There's an excitement of uh, bringing a child into the world, um, making parents, grandparents. I mean, there are all types of stuff that goes with it. And then there's That's this super fear that comes with it that like, am I good enough? Will I do the right things? You know, am I ready? You know? Yeah. You brought up a good, uh, you brought up a good point right now. You just said, you know, and also making somebody grandparents. I never thought of that. Like, wow, it's not just you now. You're making another set of people on two sides grandparents. And, you know, um, so now, not that, not that it's better or worse, but because you find out you're going to be a dad. But then did you know, like, you were going to be a father to a boy or you just waited to the to pregnancy day? Uh, fortunately for us, at the time that Kara got pregnant with our first child, which was Anthony. Right. Um, she worked for the OBGYN at the time. Okay. So we had a couple of extra privileges that worked out really well for us. Um, I was calm, cool, collective in the doctor's office when okay. we were told. Uh, Anthony was a proud little man inside the belly. He, he was he was proud to say, hey, I'm coming and I'm going to be a boy. Yeah. And I kind of felt a little sad for Kyra at first because I, I know a girl for a woman is, is kind of like the dress up and the partner in crime for them. But for a, a boy, for a man is, is a different thing. You know, it's yeah. like our father, you know, uh, it's a man card keeper. It's like, you know, that type of thing. Right, right, and right. I remember going down the elevator and getting to my car and I did like the biggest happy dance and called oh. everybody. And I was like, they're going to be a dad. They're going to be a dad of a boy. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They name and traditions. And it was it was really awesome. Oh, yeah, for sure. I can imagine. And then, uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is not Tony Stewart right here. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, he's better than Tony Stewart, but he's not. He's this, he drives like Tony Stewart. I can tell you that he'll make you crap your pants like, you know, if you were driving with Tony Stewart. All right. So but um, so now when you find that out, fast forward. Now, how does that feel? Your expectations, your uh, visions of what fatherhood would be like. Now your boy is he's a teenager. What, what's the difference? Like the first day, you know, he's born and now, now, like I know a lot to talk about there, but what's, how does that feel? The difference? You know, so uh, you're, if, if anybody follows me or follows you or, or you're even like yourself, you know me, uh, Anthony was uh, a complicated uh, child at, bo- at birth. So we went through a lot. So the first one was uh, very um, trying emotionally, physically, mentally, uh, for both a father and a mother or anybody going through it. But uh, like, you know, having a child and that, that um, lack of sleep and the feedings and, you know, the changings and the dressing and, you know, all the little things that go with it and holding and being careful to God, he comes down and gives me a bear hug now and stands just as tall as I do almost. And, you know, it's, it's like, wow. You know, like every time I come in, you know, and I see him, it's like, he just gets taller. He gets bigger. Um, his voice gets deeper. It's, Hi, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're like, who? Where, where'd my son go? What happened to my little man? Yeah, um, it's just life changing from, like from that. From, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I mean, bro, I remember us, your son's age. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. It, 
it really is a blink of an eye life. I mean, it's just like, I can't believe it. So what is the greatest thing or lesson um, that your father taught you or one of the things that your father taught you inadvertently or, or directly? Two things that I could carry on from dad, uh, you know, God rest his soul. But uh, one was um, learn early in life that uh, – always remember that you're, the truth will find you out. Lying gets you nowhere. The truth will always find its way and you'll always wind up, you know, having to recoup from that. So always be honest was, was one of the best things. Uh, and then of course, as a family man, just teaching us in being who he was, a, a godly man, a family man, and then a working man um, was important. And, and, and it's huge in how I'm bringing up my family and the way I, I treat us and support our family and, and handle all those things. Yeah, interesting you, you mentioned that because I think good parenting, good fathering, or whatever it may be, a good teacher, good coach, it's not necessarily what you tell someone. It's how you live, you know? And I know, because I grew up with you guys, I know your dad, it's right, like how he lived. You teach by example, you know, not necessarily right. sat you down and said, don't do that. Yeah, you, there's that, but right? But it's like, how, like you just said, family man, working, coming home, loyal, faithful, you know, just doing it. Kids watch, they see, you know, your, 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 your son and daughter see and hear what's going on. And that's the greatest lessons you can live. I'm, I'm examples of what children should grow up to be. And if they're not there or they're not involved or they're bad parents, right. What you wind up with as an outcome. Right. And I, I'm going to jump real quick uh, to this next question. Cause it kind of ties into what we're just talking about. So fatherlessness in this country. I mean, I, in my opinion, the greatest ill of our, of the world is fatherlessness, you know, runaway dads or dads that are in the home, but they're really kind of like checked out, which is also, yeah. I mean, what do you, what do you think about that? And by the way, let me say this. Um, you know, if you talk to someone who works in a prison or a jail, uh, and I actually did an internship at, at a local jail when I was in college, I, I was interested in law enforcement and go into it, but they always say inmates, 99% of them have this one thing in common. That is no dad, no dad, no dad, no dad, no dad, right down the jail cells. So what's your opinion on, on fatherlessness in this country? It's a huge problem. I mean, it's statistically, we know it. If you listen to the news or you follow somebody online or Instagram or TikTok or whatever, you'll, you'll, you'll see and hear those de this, um, debates all the time. Um, people that grow up without a father in a home miss something large. Um, not growing up in that type of home, I can't answer what exactly it is, but I'm sure, you know, we could sit and probably talk for hours about all the things that it definitely is. I mean, mad props to all the moms that do it both of by course. The, uh, and try to handle both sides of that. But there's a difference when a father's in the home, even for another man or woman, you know, it's a girl's first love. It's a protector. It's her soulmate. Um, you know, it's going to protect her all the way until she's ready to date and get married for a son. It's something that gives him. Uh, guidance on what he should grow up to be and how he should treat a woman and, and, and vice versa, even for the girl, you know, watching how a father treats a mother is, is an example of how she should expect to be treated. So when it's missing uh, or there's abusive stuff in the background or bad parenting in the background or bad father in the background or missing father in the background, they don't know any better. And they've, they've already learned something that's, that's oh. really going to change your life. Right, right, hundred percent. And then you know, I always say like, there's an old saying: eighty percent of life success is just showing up. I don't think, honestly, I mean, like, I'm not kissing your ass, but I think you're a great dad. And but I think like, for dads, just to be a good dad, not even great, just to be good, just show up, be there. Like, you don't gotta be, you know, just you know, have a job. Don't don't do drugs. Don't you know, abuse people. I mean, it, the the bar's pretty low to be a decent father. You know what I mean? Like, but it's amazing how. And I'm talking about we all know people who come from a lot of money and, you know, dad wears a fancy suit, drives a fancy car, but the dad's a, a total POS, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it, it, just because you got money doesn't mean you're going to be a good dad. I mean, it really is more than, and you know this because like I said, I think you're a great dad, but um, yeah. So, but just to be decent doesn't take much, you know? And um, it's amazing how many times men drop the ball on this stuff. Um, just like, I'm always, yeah, I'm always perplexed when fathers, just run away and want nothing to do with their kids. I'm like, I get it. You might not like your girlfriend or your wife, but damn, you don't want anything to do with your kids. Like you went and they'll, I hear shit like that. Oh yeah. I tried to contact them, but my, my ex or my girlfriend doesn't want me to talk to them. Really? Come on, man. Like, are you really trying? You're full of shit. Like, you know, come on. I've seen both sides of the, the fence before we, you know, 
we have friends and family throughout the years that, you know, a mom is super bitter at an ex-boyfriend or an ex-husband and they do anything and everything from uh, lie to just, you know, downright just be nasty to, to keep the father from being in their lives. Yeah. And I've seen the same children grow up and they're very confused and, you know, disoriented in life and as they're growing up into teens and young adults um, because they've been blinded by stories. Yeah. And, not just the dad being a bad person or leaving or not wanting anything to do with them, but it's a mom who makes it hard for that child to have an open communication with that, that person, that yeah. man, father, um, and, and tell stories or lies or he, right. he bad mouth. And, you know what I, it's, it goes both ways. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know, it's funny. Cause people always say like, Oh, uh, you know, when, when there's a divorce, the woman always gets the kids, the woman always gets the kids, the woman always gets the kids. Th that's true but th what i found out is the woman always gets the kids because most men don't fight they just acquiesce and say uh, i'm done and they walk away of course most men don't get the kids because they don't even fight i know guys who have fought and they get 50 50 or they get or they get majority with the kids because they put up a fight but a lot of guys punk out and l leave the country leave the state don't show i mean and i would even say even the dads that are married got dads that are punking out saying like yeah, you know, I'm busy, busy. Like they're never home, they're never around, they never they miss all the games, they miss everything. It's like that's kind of absentee dad too. Just because you have a nice car and you're wearing a tie doesn't, you know, like you only get, in my opinion, maybe 18, 19 years, and that's it. It's over. Like your kid's gone. A short amount of time to make a very deep, long-lasting impression on a child. Yeah, you know, and uh anyways, so but and, and I get it. nobody's perfect. I understand that. But anyways, okay. So, what is the um, uh, so what is the greatest thing or lesson um, that you're proud uh, as of now that you've taught your kids directly or indirectly? Like, what's something you're trying to instill in them? I think you know you're always as a parent wondering if you're doing the right thing consistently. But I think based on you know what was handed down to me, um, being there for them as best as I can, and that's difficult because they're both of age where um, they're independent to some extent, but, you know, trying to be there for them, uh, supportive, uh, asking them how their day is. Uh, but I think the biggest thing to teach them uh, is the difference between right and wrong. Um, and, and then uh, 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 faith to, for me, it's faith. I mean, for, for us growing up, even for my wife, you know, um, it's instilling in them the belief of Jesus and, and, and knowing that they got something stronger than even us here above to believe in and they can get them through um, and to believe that wholeheartedly. It's, it's, uh, it's huge. It's, yeah. it's part of raising a child. And I, I think that goes across the board for everybody. I, I, I don't, I won't pick and, and choose sides of religions because to each their own. Yeah. Something is better than nothing, yeah. but it's definitely important. Bro. You know, it's funny. You just mentioned this now. Uh, talk about that so in the news right now there's a famous fighter mma fighter conor mcgregor and he just mm -hmm. got well i don't know if he's gonna get arrested but there's a woman accusing him of rape and this apparently according to the news is like the not the first time and he's a, got a girlfriend or married he's got a couple kids and i couldn't help but to think and again who knows if he's innocent or guilty but that's, that's for the law to decide but when i heard the story come out he had a famous fight with a muslim fighter and, uh, you know, it, it's just interesting. And the, the, this Muslim fighter beat the pistol out of Conor McGregor. But it, it, it's interesting because I said to myself, wow, this guy, his name Habib, who beat Conor, has a faith, a religion. It's not our religion. He's Muslim. But like you said, nonetheless, he's got a core. He had a very good, loving, strong dad in his life every single day. Yeah. Uh, doesn't drink, you know, no drugs is married, has kids, he goes to mosque, he works, he comes home, goes to mosque, he works, he comes home. That's it. You know, and I said, funny how you don't hear a peep about this guy, Habib. But Connor is always getting into some kind of trouble. And you got to wonder, I don't know, what kind of life did he have growing up? What kind of relationship did he have with his father and mother, particularly father? I don't know. But I mean, I think you reap what you sow and the fruits have been shown. And <laughs> what's that? I said, absolutely. I mean, society itself pushes, you know, certain agendas. So whether it's, again, through social media contacts that, you know, they they push these guys that don't, aren't pop, you know, that aren't, they make the, the bad guys popular. They make that the, the hero. They make the, right. 
football players that get in trouble or the right, right, right. rappers that get in trouble. Those are the drugs are okay. Sleeping around, right? Womanizing. Like, oh, yeah, somebody like that guy that grew up with a good background, a good father, a good faith, a good family. Whether we agree with it or not, you don't hear people about because there's nothing to talk about because he's like quiet, and normal. And maybe. the father has, has showed him without words how to be loyal, how to be you know showing up kind of like what you're saying with your dad your father worked he came home you knew he was loyal faithful like there was, there's nothing to teach like verbally you just watch the man and this is the the guy habib had that role model and connor you got to wonder what kind of role model did he have uh, yeah, Correct. I don't know. but yeah i mean uh so okay so the other thing i wanted to say i ask you is um so what advice would you give dads to be i have some friends that are going to be dads and i'm just like oh boy so what would you tell dads <laughs> to be first first time dads yeah First time dads, I mean, um, say goodbye yeah. to sleep, sucker. <laughs> yeah, the first thing to say, yeah, say goodbye to sleep. There's nothing normal, and uh, as much as you think you can get prepared for it, you'll never be prepared for it. It's, right. it's uh, there's no book, there's no handbook, there's no guidance. The things that your parents learned along the way, they've ain't gonna help you because you're gonna do it your way anyhow. So, right, right, right. You know, uh, it's a life changing event um, that you better be ready to be committed to yeah be there and, and let me tell you the rest is fun right the, the, the right let's, wait, let's not forget that right there's a lot of joy and happiness and oh, right. it, I mean, we're making it sound like it's marine corps training but you're yeah. right you know stinky diapers late nights late feeding right. uh doctor visits crying teething i mean you know all that stuff in the beginning but it's all part of it and right. there's joy and celebration with that along the way there are milestones and right 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 it's awesome it's awesome yeah. Okay. So, uh, um, by the way, so what would you think is the, uh, as of now, I mean, obviously you're still raising your son and daughter, but up until we'll take the firstborn, Anthony. So from zero to now, what was like, I, I, I guess you kind of already alluded to it, but what was the most challenging time of his upbringing? Well, I guess it was his early years, right? Because of early years, his birth was right. hard. Was right, right. And that's a different show in itself. Um, he's probably, at the point now at teenage, and I think most parents will agree that have a child older than mine that maybe is 18 or 19 or getting ready to go off to college. Um, I think Anthony's probably getting ready for that difficult point. He's not trying to be difficult, but at 13, it's hormones and things, yeah. it's hormones, it's, it's mood swings, it's, um, you know, growing spurts and eating habits and I want more and, you know, so on and so forth and yeah i you know i think we're in for it I, and i know oh god bless me when sophia gets to about the teenage years oh yeah something. dude <laughs> yo never leave your house never go on a weekend getaway <laughs> you better that house like you gotta always stay home my man <laughs> if if she continues on the path she's at we're close nearby to military bases so we that's might just it very school <laughs> Marine Corps. yeah uh, you know growing up right you know we grew up together I was yeah. always baffled when I would hear friends of ours be like, oh, my parents are going away for the weekend. I'm having a party at the house. I'm like, whose parent leaves the house? And you don't think like, you know, wow, dude, like my parents knew better than to leave our house. Like, because we would yeah. tear that shit up. Like, you know, so my parents never left the house, you know, good. And they were smart. But I'm always baffled. Like when parents are like, you know, when we were kids. Yeah, my parents had gone come over. I'm like, really? Your parents are gone for the weekend? Like, phew. Not mine. They were always home. Yeah, and that's then, what I'm saying. Right. You know. It's different now, too. So you can go away for the weekend and you got cameras all over the house. So true. So. True, true, true. All right. So in closing, what is the greatest thing of being a father, uh, you know, to your, to your children? What's the, the And you kind of were touching on it. So we'll wrap it up with that. What is, what is the greatest thing? I think that? for me, I mean, all of it's great. There's, there's so much when you go back and you look at photos or you look at memories or you talk about it, you know, there's tons of things, tons and tons and tons of things. Um, but I think the biggest joy for me with both of them is uh, I don't care how bad or what kind of day you've had or what you've been through when you come through that front door and they greet you and they hug you, it makes everything melt away. I mean, there's nothing at that point that's bad. There's nothing that you can worry about. I don't care if you're you know, you're worried about where the next paycheck's coming from. I don't care if your health is bad. I don't care if somebody else's health is bad. I don't care if somebody passed away. I don't care mm -hmm. what a child's hug. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the time they can walk and grab you to the time they leave the nest. Yeah. Um, they're loving and they give you a hug. It It's it's a problem solver for everything for that day. Yeah. yeah I think it hit the nail on the head, right? Family is everything. Your kids are... Even on a bad day, right? It's uh, it's something that yeah, we're we're created like that by our creator, and it's uh, if you can have that, you know, it, it is a blessing. Uh, 
and yeah, worth uh, all the the hassle and this and that, but it is more joy and more, more blessing than anything. Right. So yeah, dude. So that's awesome. I appreciate you taking the time. Anything else, Dan, you wanted to add before we wrap this up? No, it's good to see you. I see as older, we're both wearing glasses. Oh, so. that's right. I didn't even occur to me. You were wearing glasses. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah dude. Uh, uh, no, these are reading glasses, although I'm probably, yeah, so am I. Yeah, I'm going blind though, bro. It's just like, you know, I was on a date a while back. I'm not going to name names, but I was on a date a while back. <laughs> but uh, So, I'm sitting next to this crust from my date, right? And I have my glasses off. And I and I'm thinking like she's well, you know, she says she's a certain age, like my age. And I go to read the menu. I put the glasses on and I glance up. I was like, oh my God. Like I could see clearer and I could see she's a lot older than than this. So I, the rest of the date, I'm like, okay, she's younger. I go like that, she's older. I'm like, oh no, man. <laughs> so, but you know. And it's funny you mention that because, like, every time we wind up at a restaurant and I forget to bring my glasses, I'm like constantly leaning over to Karen, going, "What's on the menu? I can't see everything. What's on this? What comes with this?" She's like, "Don't sure. you remember to bring your glasses?" Wait, is like, Karen wearing glasses or no? Uh, she does now. Yeah, off and on, depending on what she's got going on. So, yeah, she's had glasses off and on for a little bit longer than I have. So, uh, I had to finally give it. It's, it's been about two or three years now. Yeah, and then I got to remind myself, like, I'm not the only one. Like, I, I said to myself, "Well, I probably." People, I, I I know I have enough wrinkles too and everything, so I'm sure like you know anybody looking at me just don't wear glasses. I look a lot younger and yeah. you put this on, you're like bam, this guy's old and gray. You know the gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I get the gray everywhere. Going, you know, <laughs> so but no, you look good, man. So anyways, but let, 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 enough pumping each other up, dude. Right. So, all right. So I'll let you go. You had a long day. To, uh, give my best to everybody, and this is uh, <laughs> this is awesome, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. All the people who take the spot of the father if you've been raised by your uncle your 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 grandfather whoever adopted parent like big shout out to all the dads out there it's so so important you know we love our moms but man dads are so so vital it, it, you know so anyways thank you to all the dads and that's it everyone happy father's day dan thank you i'm signing us thank out you. happy father's day to you my man Father's day to you and everybody five. up thank you five four three two one